love you All the good times we had, I wish I could repeat them For the past three months Love and feeling a little fever can't hear me now y'all can hear me what's good y'all welcome back uh <laughs> um to another video so so today we gonna go into mf doom timeline you know and learn more about mf doom you know i wanna i know a lot i know just about everything about him but i you never know what happens someone tell me something brand new about him you never know so with that being said, be sure to like, subscribe, and let's get into the video. Starts, I just want to let you all know that I'm working on another Doom related video where I pick apart and talk about different MF Doom songs. So if you have a particular song you'd like to see me talk about, leave it in the comment below and I might just feature it in this future video. And without further ado, this is the MF Doom discography timeline. Yes sir! As most hardcore Doom fans know, Daniel Dumoulin's career didn't start under the MF Doom moniker. In fact, Dumoulin wouldn't be known as MF Doom for many years. He also has a bunch of different aliases he goes yes, by, so for I the know. sake of simplicity and this video, I'm just gonna refer to him simply as Doom. And before Doom would don the mask, he was known as Zevil of X in the New York-based hip-hop trio KMD. And while KMD isn't necessarily part of the MF Doom discography, it is music made by Daniel Dumoulin. Also, I think KMD is a pivotal moment in Doom's life, since all the experience and practice he acquired in this era of his life would ultimately carry over into what he would later become. KMD ended up releasing two albums, the first of which being Mr. Hood in 1991. The group would finish working on their sophomore album in 93, but the record wouldn't have its official release until 2001 due to a variety of unfortunate circumstances. Yeah. After this, Dumoulin would go quiet for many years, until finally re-emerging onto the scene with his solo debut. Oh no! He's become... become a... a rapper! Operation Doomsday would release on September 22nd of 1999. This is where Doom would adopt his whole villainous, Dr. Doom inspired gimmick. The album was produced by Metal Fingers himself and ended up being hugely influential to the underground, and it features one of my favorite instrumentals on Gas Draws. It also features the first appearance of MF Doom character King Ghidorah, but we'll talk more about him later. The collaborative MF EP, it features both Doom and his friend MF Grin. The EP has a runtime of 50 minutes, but half of the EP is just instrumentals. And out of the 7 remaining tracks that aren't instrumentals, two of them are remixes. We would later see the song Break Em Off featured on MF Grimm's solo debut, but more importantly, we see the track No Snakes Alive featured on a future Doom album. Throughout the next two years, Doom wouldn't rap over any full-length projects. Instead, he would start his Special Herb series, releasing three volumes throughout these years. The first volume being released in 2001, followed by two and three in 2002. Let's descend to the depths of Monster Island. On February 13th of 2003, Doom would appear on the album Escape from Monster Island, an album that was created by a now-defunct collective known as Monster Island Zars, which was a group started by MF Grimm that Doom just so happened to be a part of. Doom actually only raps over one track on this album, but produced six of the songs. Grimm, meanwhile, didn't appear on any of the albums since he was in jail at the time. This was the only album to be released by the group, and much like KMD, isn't really part of Doom's discography, but I thought it was still worth the mention. Here's a more significant Doom album. Released in 2003, the album features Doom under his King Ghidorah alias, and even features some of his fellow Monster Island Zara members. The album received pretty good praise, even scoring a 9 by Pitchfork way back when it was first released. I would say this album marked the start of a very prolific time in Doom's career, which would span for the next yeah. couple of years. Vaudeville yeah. Villain released in September of 2003, only three months after Take Me To Your Leader. And of course, the album is known for Doom rapping under his alias of Victor Vaughn. The production was provided by five different people in total, and in terms of length, it's almost an hour long. It also just so happens to be one of the most beloved albums by both yeah. critics and fans of Doom. 
Special Herbs Volume 4 dropped only a week after the release of Vaudeville Villain, followed by Volumes 4, 5, and 6 in November of 2003, and 5 and 6 again on March 23rd of 2004, which means each of these volumes dropped twice in under 5 months. The overlapping in tracks had something to do with the fact that the albums were released under different record labels. Luckily for us, the numbering becomes consistent after the release of these volumes. It's confusing enough nowadays, but imagine being someone way back in 2003 without a computer in their pocket trying to figure all this out. Only a day after the release of Special Herds Volume 4 through 6, Doom and Madlib dropped a notorious Mad Villainy, which can yes. easily be argued as Doom's yes. most popular and influential album. Yeah, this is, this is good. Songs like Accordion and All Caps are still to this day some of Doom's most popular songs. It received overwhelmingly positive reviews when it was released, and is still one of the most celebrated rap albums even 16 years later. As I would describe it, and I'm sure many people would agree, this record is Sir. nothing short of lightning in a bottle. And because of that reason, I don't ever see Doom topping this iconic album. And I'm honestly okay with that. I'm so content and appreciative to even have a single Mad Villain album at all. And don't get me wrong, I'm always looking forward to new Doom music, but asking Doom to make an album that could rival Mad Villainy is like asking Nas to top Illmatic. What more can I possibly say about this album that hasn't been said to death by now? Venomous Villain. This is the follow up to Victor Vaughn's Vaudeville Villain. Yeah. It came out less than a year after its older brother, and only five months after Mad Villainy. It's easily one of the most overlooked Doom albums, and it's not too hard to see why. I mean, this album isn't exactly accessible. It isn't featured on any of the main streaming platforms like Apple Music, Spotify, or Tidal. Give me a break, even the way lesser known MFEP is on Apple Music. <laughs> your best bet of listening to this album is either on SoundCloud or YouTube. I recommend SoundCloud since you could lock your phone and continue on with your day without the music pausing. Special Herbs 7 and 8 came out a month later on September 21st of 2004, but forget that, let's talk about Doom Food. I would consider this album yeah. Doom's most popular and well-recognized well, yeah. solo album. The vast majority of this album is produced by Metal Fingers himself. Aside from that, I just love how thematic the entire album is. It's the food album, and Doom does a great job at not letting you forget about that. Many of the lyrics include references to food, even the song titles. This album in particular, in my opinion, is one of the best albums you could recommend to first-time listeners. Deep Fried Friends is one of my favorite Doom songs, yeah. and don't even get me started on pop Friends. holders. Both Doom and Count Bass uh. these verses synergize perfectly over Dwight's gritty production. The only track I could say that I don't really like that much is Guinness's, which don't feature any Doom at all. But regardless of how I feel about that one song, the album as a whole is still one of Doom's most solid and well put together albums. At first I considered not even putting this album on here just because it doesn't include any new content. It's just a live album that was recorded in 2005 and features Doom performing songs from his previous albums. It was recorded in January of 2004 yet features the song One Beer which wouldn't be released for over 10 months. That's just one little detail I noticed but realistically there isn't all that much to say about this album. The Mouse and the Mass, a really cool album where Doom teams up with producer Danger Mouse to create this Adult Swim cross-promotional album type thing. The album is full of references to shows that were airing on Adult Swim at the time. I was only a kid when this album came out, so I can only imagine the thrill yeah, fans of both I Doom and Adult Swim felt when they randomly see these two working together. A lot of people give this album flack for having the Adult Swim theme so deeply ingrained, and I don't necessarily agree with those criticisms. In the same way the Food Album's theme revolved around food, this album revolves around the Adult Swim swim theme. And it's not like the album was made with the intention of being a timeless record. It serves more as a time capsule of the mid 2000s, a time before the internet completely encompassed our lives, an era that quite a lot of people are nostalgic for nowadays. And much like the upcoming end of this now cherished era, so too would come the end of Doom's mainstream relevancy, yeah. as he would never again be as relevant as he was at the time of releasing this project. Space. We don't care. We don't care, bro. We do not care. We do not care. We do not care, honestly. It was the old MF Doom line. Snitches telling all their business, sitting in court and being their own star witness. <laughs> I'm your holiday host on Adult Swim. Pain. All my homies know is pain. This video was brought to you by...
hitting the like button. The YouTube algorithm just loves to sandbag my videos in search and discovery. Hitting the like button minimizes this and helps to spread the video to a wider audience. So if you like the content I'm putting out, then do me a huge favor and just hit the like button. It takes a split second of your time, but means the world to me. For the next few years, Doom would stay relatively quiet in terms of dropping rap-centric projects. He released the Special Herbs box set in January of 2006, which included all the Special Herb volumes as well as some KMD instrumentals. On May 30th of 2006, Danger Doom followed up The Mouse and the Mask with an EP which contained two new tracks, three remixes, and two skits. The two new songs, Perfect Hair 2 and Corn Dogs, were most likely pre-recorded during the Mouse and the Mask sessions. Adult Swim even offered the EP for free on their website, which I think is really cool of them. Much like Live from Planet X, I contemplated on whether or not even mentioning this album. There isn't much to say about this project anyways, Doom doesn't rap over any of the songs, it's just Metal Fingers production. The EP wasn't released commercially. Again, there isn't much to say about this, I just figured I'd mention it briefly. I was not kidding when I said Doom wouldn't drop any rap-centric material for a while. The next MF Doom related release was Mad Villainy 2. Which sounds great, what rap fan in 2008 wouldn't want more from Mad Lib and Doom? Unfortunately however, you'd be disappointed to find out that this album is simply a remix album, with little to no new content in terms of rapping by Doom. Right. Never mind. Born like this. Yes. Eight months yes. after Mad Villainy 2, mm -hmm. and nearly four years since his last mm -hmm. rap album, came some That's fresh Doom verses on his new solo album, Born Like This. Mm -hmm. The album features new skits, verses, and even has production by not only Metal Fingers, but as well as Mad Lib and Jay Dilla. Born Like This, in my opinion, is right behind Venomous Villain yeah. in terms of how badly overlooked it is. This yeah. album came out four years after Doom's yeah. peak in popularity, so by this time, casual yeah. listeners probably weren't all that interested. Regardless, I still noticed some Doom fans rep this album, but not nearly as much as some of his other projects, which is a shame because tracks like That's That deserve way more recognition. Unexpected Guest is a compilation album which features tracks previously released throughout Doom's career. Almost every song in this album features another artist, like for example Ghostface Killer, Sean Price, Inspect the Deck, and plenty more. Much like Live from Planet X, this is a live album. It was recorded back in 2004, yeah, which means that this album came out that. six years after it was originally recorded. That. It features Doom performing songs from Mad Villainy, M Food, and Operation Doomsday. It's after this album that Doom truly started to become inconsistent in terms of dropping new material. Key to the Cuff is a collaborative project between Doom and Gennaro Durrell. If you've watched Adult Swim in the late 2000s, then you've probably heard some of his work in bumps between shows. So the story goes that in 2010, Doom hosted a tour in Europe, and upon completion of the tour, he tried to come back home, only to be denied re-entry into the United States, which left him with no choice but to relocate to the UK, where he was originally born. He famously went on record saying, I'm done with the United States. Doom references this whole situation throughout the album, like the song titled Banished, or lyrics like, the supervillain been kicked out your country, and he said the Pledge of Allegiance six times monthly. If you are wondering what album I think is more overlooked than Born Like This, it's key to the cuffs. What little attention this album does receive is usually unfavorable. Which sucks because overall, Cuffs isn't a bad record. I think it gets a lot of unwarranted hate because it's experimental, even for Doom standards. It's more of a pop rap feel than a traditional hip hop record, and I could see why some people may argue that Doom and Gennaro Jarrell aren't the best combo, at least not for an entire album. Regardless, I think Cuffs is a little misunderstood, and it doesn't deserve all the hate it gets. Why do you have to hate what you don't understand? Yeah. It would be two years after Key to the Cuffs that Doom would come out with a new collaborative project. This it. album definitely doesn't overstay its welcome, it's the shortest of all his collaborative projects at just over 31 minutes. Neruvian Doom features Bishop Neru rapping over an entire set of MF production, with the exception of one song which credits the production to Mad Villain, which I'm assuming means both Doom and Mad Lib worked on it. This record is easily his most unlikable album in terms of critical and fan reception. Neruvian is the lowest scoring album in the aggregate out of all his collaborative and solo albums. It's not not too difficult to see why. There just isn't much Doom presence on this album, he just features on a few songs. And that's unfortunate because the main selling point of this album isn't Bishop Nauru, it's MF Doom. I think yeah. this album could have been better if they both took some time to flesh it out. I think a couple more songs with Doom as a vocal point could have really turned the tide for this album. But other than that, I think the skits are great, and the instrumentals which play over the intro could only be described as villainous. He's gonna take you back to the pen. The Missing Notebook Rhymes 
Just like in 2005 with the Danger Doom album, MF Doom and Adult Swim came together once again. Only this time it was for their singles program, where Doom was to deliver new and unreleased music to put out weekly for the summer. Because of internal reasons, the full set of music was never released, and to this day an explanation has never been given by either Doom or Adult Swim. I'm not gonna say much more than that since I think this whole situation is worthy of its yeah. own video. Westside Doom is a really short two song EP featuring Westside Gun and MF Doom. What? Supposedly the two are supposed to come out with an entire album together, but it's been over three years since this EP. And knowing Doom's schedule and attitude nowadays, I have a feeling that we won't be seeing a full length project from these two anytime soon. One thing I will say however is that the art that we got from this project is really cool. And the most recent album Doom has come out with is Zarface meets Metal Face. The album consists of Doom of course, as well as Zarface. It received pretty favorable reviews amongst fans and critics, which isn't too surprising considering the status of the artists that are on this project. I have yet to listen to this album in its completion, but from the few songs that I have heard, it seems like a pretty good record. Zarface Meets Metal Face was Doom's last album, and as such concludes the MF Doom discography timeline, for the time being at least. I'll give the award for best album cover to Mmm Food. Most artists nowadays will just slap a random image onto their album and call it a day, which is unfortunate because the album cover is like a visual representation of the album. And that's it. Aside from a handful of features, Doom has remained relatively quiet since his last project in 2018, leaving us to speculate what villainous deeds he has planned for us in the music world next. That's what I'm about to say. It's sad because y'all see down there in the corner, November the 4th, where he passed away. Around that time, around November or whatnot, December, that's when news got out. MF Doom died. And he's been gone since that Halloween. It's sad. It's so sad. MF Doom really changed my whole experience on music. Story time. So I remember it was one kid. He's like, yo, bro, you a good rapper. You know, I was in high school and I was a junior and he was a senior. He's like, yo, you a good rapper. I think you get 10 times better if you listen to MF Doom. And he used to play me. He's like, what the hell is this? It's trash. This ain't my type. This ain't my style. It wasn't J. Cole. It wasn't Kendrick. It wasn't something I'm a view to. I was comfortable with. And then when senior year came, that dude left. And I started listening to MF Doom. I'm like, dang, I see what he's talking about now. Operation Doomsday. Mm, food. Born Like This, albums like that, Victor Vaughn, albums like that really changed and paved the way for a rapper like me. I just want to say, I was a big fan. And rest in peace, MF Doom, in all caps, when you spell the man's name. That being said, be sure to like, subscribe, stay tuned for the next video, peace. Sorry, you're the poet.